Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and in the last one I showed you how to make those loading bar animations, and a lot of people like them, but people kept asking over and over and over again if you could do sloping loading bars. So not just ones that buffer, uh, but ones that slow down because the three-dimensional version is sloping, and let me actually show you an example of that since it's probably not obvious what I'm talking about. Uh, so you can see that this has the buffering on the um, two-dimensional version because of this uh, thing that happened before you guys already understand, but also it slows down because this slopes upward. And a lot of people have been asking if you can do that. You can, and let me show you how to make it. And really, this is a very similar, if not almost exactly the same process as the last tutorial, so make sure you watch that one before this one. So again, uh, we are gonna be going into full screen so people don't yell at me. And again, we're just gonna be doing the exact same workflow. So I'm gonna do it much, much faster this time. So delete everything, shift A, add in a plane, and we are gonna turn this into our loading bar shape. So I'm gonna scale this down on the Y axis, make it about loading bar length on the X axis. So something like this. And then we are gonna make our three dimensional shape. So in this case, we're gonna have both bumps and slopes. And to do that, we're gonna add some loop cuts. That's control R. On this side, we can have a bump. In fact, we can have two, so I'm gonna add a bunch of loop cuts. And then on this right side over here, we are gonna have our slope upwards. So starting with the bumps, uh, we are just gonna select a face that we want bumped, extrude, downwards, delete the two faces, so you know it turns into a strip again. And then we can do, we can have this one go upwards, I guess. So this one's gonna be a long pause because it's going vertical for a long time. So just delete that. And then for our slope, what I like to do is I'm gonna have it end by, you know, slowing down, like, you know, it's at 99% and it starts slowing down to get to 100 as uh, stuff really happens in the, re what am I even saying? Either way, take this, bring it upwards like that. The higher up you go, the slower this thing is gonna like, it's gonna decelerate more if you make this higher. And we're gonna take this bevel, that's control B, and just bevel it, add a couple uh, loop cuts or just a couple segments so it's a bit smoother and just go like that. And then we are also gonna do a merge by distance. And you can see that removed four uh, vertices and basically it just merged these vertices over here and over here that were basically uh, duplicated in about the same position. Okay, so that is the modeling portion. We are also gonna make a duplicate of this, bring it over here. And again, we are gonna do the same thing as last time, edit mode, scale this on the Z axis and bring it to zero to make a flat version that has a lot of the information retained. And actually, we could either unwrap both of these or I'm just gonna backtrack, say, don't do that. First, we're gonna do our unwrap, although you could do them uh, separately. So first of all, let's unwrap this. In this case, I guess we're going along the X axis this time. Last time we went along the Y axis. Now we are gonna duplicate this again, you could have done this in any order. It's just easier this way. Scale it to zero. Now they have the same UV map and we need to make our shader. We can also make this shade smooth so we don't have any facetting. And also, uh, by the way, little trick, if you do shade smooth and you get this kind of issue, again, it won't matter since we're doing flat shading, kind of we're doing flat shading on render. Uh, the trick to fix this is you go to here, what's this called? You go to object data, normals, auto smooth, and that will fix it. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the shading workspace, make the same kind of material as before. So create a new material and make sure that both of these objects use that material. We are gonna use our texture coordinates. Again, we are gonna be using the UV instead of position because of the issue we talked about last time. Uh, so UV map right there. And then we are gonna separate this and this time we are just gonna be using the X axis because again, our UV map, which I can show right here, our UV map is going along the X axis. Okay, uh, to turn this into a version that doesn't have any interpolation issues, right now this has linear interpolation probably, what we're gonna do is we are gonna do the greater than approach instead of the color ramp constant interpolation. So math node, put that in there, set this to greater than if I can find it. You could just probably type in G, yeah, greater than, keep that as is, add another math node, set this one to add, and now we have a slider that lets us control this. And notice that again, we have the same kind of idea going on here, where instead of position coordinates, what this one lets us do is it actually takes time uh, to travel on this Z axis, right? 
And you can see in this version it's paused, and in this version it's just doing, going along the path, and then for this one you're going to see that it slows down on the flat version. Okay, cool. So now let's do a bit of animation. So timeline, we'll have it go for 90 frames again. On the first frame, we should have it start from the beginning. So just find about where that is. Keyframe all the way to the 90th frame, which is the last frame. And then send it over to the end, which should probably be 0.5. Keyframe, now let's see that. Okay, that looks good, except we have... I mean, you could keep it like this, but this is not true uh, constant rate uh, type of uh, animation. To do that, we need to go to uh, this node where we have our animation, T, turn this into linear interpolation. Before, it should have been in Bezier interpolation, which also slows it down at the end, so it would have kind of doubled up. No need for that. Now, what we are going to do, same tricks as before, to turn this from black and white to green and white, uh, we are going to use a mix RGB node. Make sure this is set as the factor. Same kind of stuff. Uh, we're going to change the first one to green. Nope, other way around. We are going to change the second one to green. Or, you know what, let's stick with our decisions. Make the first one green, make the second one white, and then to fix this, we can just add an inversion. Invert node. Sorry about the radiator. But you can see that the invert node does exactly what you think it does. Okay, cool. So now we have our color palette, and we should just make sure everything is looking right. So let's add a camera, open up the end menu, which is probably called something different, lock camera to view so we can reposition this. And somebody recommended that we use orthographic camera, and that's a great suggestion, but I am going to ignore it. But instead, I'll meet you halfway in between. In our camera options, we're going to use a focal length that's much bigger, which means it's kind of closer in some sense to orthographic, which has infinite focal length in some sense. So we're just gonna do 80, which is gonna make everything look a bit cleaner and just center these. Doesn't have to be perfect because you know what? I don't wanna spend the time to make this perfect. Okay, cool. Let's do a render, see what it looks like. Okay, we have that nice flat shading. And again, to get the outline we were talking about uh, in render tab, regardless of whether you're using EV or cycles, Enable freestyle. In the layers, you are just going to get rid of crease again. If you do this, you're going to have the nice outline, but you have these creases uh, that, don't, that aren't bordering it, so we don't need those. Disable crease. New render. Boom. Looks beautiful. And then final thing we need to do is in the world tab, we are going to change this to white to match the color. And again, this isn't going to affect anything since we're not using BSDFs. And also, EV interacts pretty weirdly uh, with environment, especially if you're using HDRIs. So, in fact, it kind of looks like that. You have that cartoony look. And I kind of don't like how these lines are perfectly overlapping over here, making a thicker line. So, of course, to fix that, we just need to change perspective a little. And now you can see that there's actually a bit of a gap here, so you can tell what's going on a bit more. Okay, so let's say we are happy with that. Only thing I might change is make those lines a little thicker this time since we're not going to do the loading text because I think that looks pretty stupid. I just wanted to show that we can uh, copy the Reddit version pretty well. Okay, 1.5 is too much. 1.2, is that better? Awesome, that looks awesome. Okay, so finally we are going to output. Make sure this is 30 frames per second since I want it to be 3 seconds since it's 90 frames. And we can see this animation, it's doing the pausing, the buffering, and then also slowing down at the end. Of course, again, make it slope even more for more slowdown. Uh, we are going to output this as a FFmpeg video container. We are going to set to MP4, high quality. And again, I'm not explaining everything in this tutorial, really, because I already made this tutorial. This can be thought of as an addendum of sorts. Um, we can call this curve loading to and then save. I guess I didn't save the project, that's fine. Just render, no need to save. Okay, so now we are gonna let this render. I'm gonna get a drink of water. I don't have any pizza or anything this time. Hmm. And I'm going to start working while, while this is rendering. I guess we can talk about something else. Uh, pretty soon I should start working on the shader node series, although I am thinking about making it very, very long 
and therefore just making it pretty cheap on the Blender market since it's going to be a crazy uh, tutorial series and I feel like it's a good fundamental course. We'll see. Maybe there'll be a discount for patrons and all that since I love my Patreon members. Okay, only got, what do we got, 15 frames to go? Well, I guess this has been a good overview of the techniques uh, we talked about, but also adding a bit of extra stuff to it. But this is about the time it will take you to make it in real time for you to do it. Although maybe a bit shorter since I did a tiny bit of explanation. Okay, so we have our curve loading too. That's the one we made. And we also have slope loading. So let's actually open both of them with VLC uh, to compare. So I'm just going to open both of them. And I'm pretty sure the way this works is it uh, switches between them. So that's the original one. And this is the version we made. And this one's a bit cooler actually. Not this one that I made before, but the one we made since it has that double buffer. So there you go. Uh, you now know how to make it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Bye-bye.